Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're in the world. This is Snapzilla Gorilla from the Definition of Anarchy channel. I want to welcome you guys. Listen, today is Wednesday, May 13, 2020, and we got clear skies out here in Southern California. And uh, no trails in the sky yet, but we'll see. Anyway, look, this is going to be. This is probably going to be my last video on the Ahmad Arbery case for a while. Uh, and that is because I want to wait until there's more evidence that comes out, more facts, perhaps even when, when the trial starts. Because you know there's probably going to be a trial if they're, uh, if they're indeed indicted, Batman and Robin McMichaels. So we'll see. But some, some things have come out that he's not going to talk about. This is Colian Noir. And uh, he's going to break down real well why, as of right now, as far as we know, Ahmaud Arbery never committed a crime in the first place. All right? But before I get into that, I'm going to talk about how several things have come out since I last talked to you guys about this, okay? Um, number one, the owners of that house that he was going through has spoken out or their lawyer has, okay? Um, you know what? I might actually do a video later breaking down what they said, what the lawyer said, and the owner's position in this whole situation. The owner's position is that they never wanted any vigilante justice to be carried out for anyone who may have entered their home, okay? Number two... They don't know the McMichaels, okay? There was some something going around that's, that was saying that uh, the, the owner of the house gave Batman and Robin McMichaels the, the, the surveillance footage. That's, that couldn't be further from the truth, okay? They never gave them any footage. They didn't know any... They had no idea that um, Ahmaud Arbery had entered the house before, Okay? They had no idea. So those those the surveillance footage that came out before, they didn't know anything about that. They didn't even know about the surveillance footage that came out for that day of Ahmad Arbery's death. And I want to point out this. This is what I want to point out. The owner of the house said that the person in the camera does not look like Ahmad Arbery. Okay, the person in the camera. I guess in the previous, um, you know, the previous times that someone had entered their house, to them, it didn't look like a Maud Arbery, okay? And that's very essential. I even, I believe they even said that the guy that was in that house that day didn't look like a Maud Arbery. So I don't know what's going on. There's some funky stuff going on around this whole case. Some speculate that this isn't even real, that that, that shooting didn't even happen. I'm not going to get off into that because I don't see any evidence that it didn't happen. But I will tell you this. Batman and Robin McMichaels was dead wrong. I don't care what anybody says. I don't. As far as we know right now, okay? Um, now, the amazing Lucas did another video based on two lawyers talking about the situation. One lawyer is a Georgia lawyer and another lawyer was the, a Can Canadian lawyer. Okay, so the Georgia lawyer was telling the Canadian lawyer that if a person is committing a misdemeanor in your immediate presence with your immediate knowledge, then you can place a citizen's arrest on that individual. But if that individual tries to escape after committing a misdemeanor, you are not to pursue them. All right, but if there is a reasonable suspicion of a felony, haven't occurred at that time, not previously, not previous burglaries from days and weeks ago, not, not none of that. I'm, we're talking about the crime as it's happening. If you have a reasonable suspicion of a crime occurring at that point in time of a felony, then if that person tries to escape, then thus they are, you can pursue them. Now, uh, I don't know how the amazing Lucas interpreted it as the lawyer saying that, or 
that uh, the uh, um, Ahmaud Arbery could or could have been placed under citizen's arrest. I don't know how he got that. If you listen to the 911 call, if you look at the transcripts, there's nothing that shows that uh, Robin McMichaels, who, who, who plays the phone, who plays one of the phone calls. There were two phone calls. Neither one of them indicated that they suspected that Ahmaud Arbery was committing a felony at the time that they saw him in that house. So that whole thing is moot. There was no reasonable suspicion of a felony at all. They did not indicate that. They didn't indicate that in the police report. They didn't indicate that in the video. All right. Now I don't. I don't. In the in the 911 call. Now I don't know if the Mason Lucas changed the position completely, thinking that you know it was wrong. Um, but he 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 felt like he's going by the law, and according to Georgia state law, he feels that they had the right to pursue him. But that's not how I interpreted it. That's how the lawyer tried to make it seem. See, they're saying. The lawyer is saying that uh, the McMichaels suspected burglary. No, they suspected that he had burglarized before. That's what they that's that's, that's what they suspected. You can't say, oh, uh, oh, you know what? I suspect you of burglary from three years ago or three weeks ago. No, that's not how it works. No, that's not how it works. It has to be. At the time, I don't, I don't know what what people are thinking. So, of course, you know his followers and his subscribers who were pissed at him for taking the position of they were wrong for chasing him in the first place. Now they're throwing it. Oh, now you want to believe in Brandon Tatum? And oh, see, I told you so, and all this stuff. No, Pimpins. No, no, that's not how it works. Nope. That's that's not it. That's not how it works. Okay. They did not suspect that a felony was committed. As far as the police report and the, the phone call goes. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play this video here that makes even that point move. All right. As far as we know right now. And if you if you, if you look at what the owners of the house are saying, it doesn't even look like they would even give him if he was alive and they so, no, 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 noticed that he uh, was trespassing. Doesn't even seem like they would even press charges against him. Now they did call the police. Not emergency, right? They placed a non-emergency phone call to the police and let them know that people were in their house. You know. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm keep going. I'm gonna go on with this this video here, just so you guys can hear it from a, a lawyer. Okay, this guy's a lawyer. All right. And he's a Second Amendment uh, advocate and uh, firearm enthusiast. But he's going to break it down real well right here. Out for a job. A couple of days ago, surveillance footage showing Ahmaud Arbery walking inside a house that was under construction was released onto the interwebs. Since this video's release, I've been hounded by comments telling me to take my video down, that I should have waited for the facts, I'm a race baiter, I look stupid, he broke the law, etc., etc., etc. So, since the release of this video, have my opinion changed? Well, let's find out. This surveillance video obtained by our Atlanta affiliate WSB will certainly be part of the debate. It was recorded shortly before Arbery was killed and shows a man walking into an open home construction site and looking around. Arbery's family attorneys say they believe this second video obtained by ABC News does show the 25-year-old former football player in that home under construction, but they underline that he wasn't breaking the law and left empty-handed, and they are praying for them. The family says they have no relationship with the McMichaels and would have never wanted what they call a vigilante response. So at 208 in the video, you see a man in a white shirt and shorts walk into a home under construction on Satilla Drive. Moments later, a person can be seen in the top left frame observing what's going on. A 911 call from that day has audio of a man saying there's someone in a house that's under construction. At 213, the first man appears to run out the front door and down the street. Investigators have not said there is any evidence Arbery burglarized the home. Police reports following the shooting did not know anything stolen on Arbery. So let's break down what we saw compared to the law. Under Georgia law, 
A person commits the offense of criminal trespass when he or she knowingly and without authority enters upon the land or premise of another person for an unlawful purpose. Each one of the elements have to be met. Based on the video, what purpose did he walk into the house for and what was the pur and was the purpose unlawful? According to the video and the owner of the house, he didn't take anything and he didn't force his way in. He just walked around looking. So, is it possible he went to steal something? Yes. Is it possible he went in to find the magical door of Narnia? Yeah, the same way it's possible that he went in simply because he was curious and wanted to look around an unconstructed home like millions of people do every single day. Hell, when my house was being built, I literally walked in on a couple walking through my unconstructed home. I was slightly taken aback, but I wasn't surprised because that's kind of what people do. All right, all suited up. Steve and I are gonna go for a nice walk and get some exercise. The sun is out. So yeah, we're gonna go and see how many calories we are, can burn. And we're gonna go over and check out this new neighborhood. They're building houses. So we're gonna kind of go in and out some of those and check and see what the floor plans look like and just have a nice walk. This is a nice kitchen. Yeah. Nice and spacious. I still like my kitchen. I have more countertops in this kitchen. The bar is nice. Yes, there's also video of someone going into that house at night that some people think is Arbery. But to my knowledge, that hasn't been confirmed. However, nothing in those videos that we have shows that he went inside to steal something. However, it does show he walked in, looked around, and then left. Maybe he realized there was nothing to steal. Either way, you can't infer intent based on weak, ambiguous, circumstantial evidence. So based on the facts we have, we can't say he went in for an unlawful purpose more evidence may come out, but from what we have, it doesn't show him taking or stealing anything. So the unlawful purpose element isn't met. Now, how about did he enter upon the land or premise of another person after receiving prior to such entry notice from the owner, rightful occupant, or upon proper identification an authorized representative of the owner or rightful occupant that such entry is forbidden? Long story short, did Arbery have noticed that he could not be on that property? Much the same way a lot of concealed carry laws work, if you carry a gun into an establishment that has a no gun policy, you're not considered trespassing until they tell you to leave and you refuse to do so. In the case of Rayburn v. State, the Georgia Supreme Court held that notice must be sufficiently explicit notice that apprises people of exactly what property they are forbidden to enter. There was no one at the house. From what we can see in the video and what is and what was said, there were no doors on the house. And as far as we know, there were no signs saying to keep out or no trespassing. There were no gates or fences. If any of these things existed at the time Arbery went into the house, then yeah, he trespassed. But that's why the operator asked, what did he do wrong? And was he on the premise when he wasn't supposed to be, i.e. the notice element? After he told her it was an open house under construction, So, based on this information in the video, the notice element isn't met either. 
Now, how about the last element? Did Arbery remain upon the land or premise of another person after receiving notice from the owner, right occupant, or upon property identification an authorized representative for the owner or rightful occupant to depart? In short, did anyone tell Arbery to leave the property? And if they did, did he leave? In the video, you can see Arbery leaving the house when the neighbor showed up outside. He might have been spooked by the neighbor. The neighbor may have said something to him. Either way, he left immediately, which means the last element isn't satisfied either. So, based on the letter of the law and the videos and information we have, and not my feelings, Arbery did not trespass. Now, if more information comes out showing that he took something, then yeah, he trespassed. But as for right now, nah, he didn't, because elements haven't been met. So now what about burglary? Did Arbery commit a burglary based on these videos? As Mr. English said, if anything was taken from the property? He said absolutely nothing has ever been taken from the property when he initially did Bitch. months ago, um, back in October, first what? contact local law enforcement through the non-emergency number to say, hey, um, someone's been coming onto my property. And like I said, we don't know who that was. Um, he, he did not characterize it as a burglary or a robbery or in any way, shape or form as any kind of crime actually having taken place, certainly not a felony because nothing ever was taken. If the video doesn't show him trespassing based on the letter of the law, then you're hard pressed to say they show him engaging in a burglary under the letter of the law. Because a burglary requires an intent to commit a felony, which is a higher standard than the unlawful purpose element of a trespass. And based on the video, he was just walking around and looking. You can't infer intent simply because he was walking into the house. If he picked something up and put it in his pocket, got him. If he had a bag and picked up something and put it in his bag, got him. Otherwise, he just walked into a house that was under construction. Based on the video, he didn't break anything. He didn't deface anything. He walked in, looked around, then walked out or ran out. It really doesn't matter. Now, does the video make him look suspect? I can see someone making that argument. But if we're talking facts, there's nothing concrete in the video that we've seen so far. There could be more considering the video is seven minutes long, but from what has been released, he technically broke no laws. Now, let's talk citizen's arrest. Under Georgia law, a private person may arrest an offender if the offense is committed in his presence or within his immediate knowledge. If the offense is a felony and the offender is escaping or attempting to escape, a private person may arrest him upon reasonable and probable grounds of suspicion. There are four elements in this law that must be satisfied to justify a citizen's arrest. First, a private person may arrest an offender if the offense is committed in his presence or within his immediate knowledge. We have limited video of what Aubrey was doing inside the house, but that's all we have. So if based on these limited videos of what he did in the house and that wasn't shown him committing a felony, it stands to reason that no one on the outside of the house saw him commit a felony on the inside of the house, especially considering that the owner said nothing was taken. If the cameras inside the house didn't show him committing a felony inside the house, then can't say that an offense was committed in their presence or within immediate knowledge when we have video of what happened inside and still can't conclude an offense was committed. Again, based on the information we have in the videos, the only thing that McMichaels actually saw Aubrey doing was running down the street. Greg McMichael told a Glynn County police officer that there had been several break-ins in the neighborhood, but it does not say he actually witnessed a crime that day, which is a requirement under the citizen's arrest law. Instead, the report says McMichael was in his front yard and saw the suspect from the break-ins hauling blank down Sedilla Drive. He believed that suspect was Ahmad Arbery. And nowhere in the report does McMichael tell the officer that he and his son were trying to make a citizen's arrest. Citizen's arrest was not what Mr. McMichael was saying at the time. He was saying that his son was acting in self-defense. The district attorney in Waycross, as part of his justification not to charge these people or to recommend that they be charged, came up with a citizen's arrest defense. The only knowledge he had of a crime was from past incidents, which ironically, based on the information we have, except for his reported stolen gun, weren't actually crimes because nothing was stolen from the house and was open with no notice that you were not allowed to be there. That's the law. As for the stolen gun, and this is just my opinion, I find it hard to believe that a person would steal a gun from a car in a neighborhood and then go back to the same neighborhood on foot. That's just my opinion. But outside of that, I have to ask, how is knowledge of a past crime knowledge of an immediate crime. It's not. The second element of citizen's arrest says a private person may arrest an offender if the offense is a felony. 
Trespassing in Georgia is a misdemeanor. Burglary is a felony. As I stated before, nothing in the video shows that he committed a trespass or burglary. So the second element isn't met. Keep in mind, you have to meet all of the elements, and we already can't meet two of the elements. So there's no point in even discussing the third one, but I will. The third element, the offender is escaping or attempting to escape. Let's say Aubrey got spooked by the neighbor who saw him go inside the house and decided to run. If he was committing a felony, then yes, this element would be met because he was leaving the house and the neighbor would be able to make a citizen's arrest because if Aubrey actually committed a felony and the neighbor saw it or saw Aubrey running out of the house with tools or materials, then he could make that citizen's arrest. But as I showed you before, based on the information we have at this moment, there was no felony. At this point, the fourth element is irrelevant as we've yet to satisfy the first three. Now on to self-defense. Right now, based on the videos we have, we have yet to establish what law Arbery violated. Under Georgia law, if you make a citizen's arrest and you're wrong about that person violating the law you think they violated, then you can be charged with false imprisonment. Ironically, that was one of the first things I learned in law school. Right now, based on all the facts we have before us, not facts in the future, but right now, what law did he break based on the letter of the law? Not what you feel he broke, but what law he broke based on the letter of the law. If you say none, then right now, based on what we have before us, you can't say with any certainty that McMichael was justified in blocking the road and trying to make a citizen's arrest of Aubrey while holding a shotgun. At least not based on the information we have now. That could change tomorrow or next week, but right now, you can't say that for a fact. You can feel he was right, but based on the letter of the law, you can't say it's a fact. Paige Pate has been practicing criminal defense for 25 years in the state of Georgia. He says the reason the citizen's arrest law was created was to allow retailers to apprehend someone that they think may be shoplifting. He says he can't think of any legitimate legal reason why that law would be cited, though, in this case, to exonerate the men involved in Ahmad Arbery's shooting death. But what's critical about Georgia's law Although you are allowed to detain someone as a citizen, if you think they've committed a crime, you cannot use excessive force. So even if there was a crime committed and he was trying to hold on to Mr. Arbery to wait for the police, you cannot then escalate it as I think happened in this case. Now, you can't say that for a fact. You can feel he was right, but based on the letter of the law, you can't say it's a fact. It's feeling. There's no question that McMichael was the initial confronter and it wasn't justified by law to confront Aubrey. Then by law, he's the initial aggressor. So whenever Aubrey encountered him, he had every right to use lethal force to defend his life because McMichael was holding a gun in his hand while trying to block Aubrey's path. So I'm saying based on the evidence at hand that is available to the public, there's enough evidence to charge the McMichaels with something. And that's why the GDI charged them. Yes, Aubrey had a criminal record, but having a criminal record doesn't automatically make Aubrey guilty of all crimes. You still have to use facts to prove someone's guilty of a crime. Otherwise, it's stereotyping based on feelings and preconceived notions. You feel he committed a crime that day because he has a criminal record, and what he was doing looks suspect to you. But the evidence and the facts don't prove that in this case. Maybe more facts will come out, maybe they won't. But based on what's out now, Aubrey didn't commit a crime and thus had grounds to stand his ground when someone is trying to use her gun to stop him from doing what he had a legal right to do. Sure, running at someone with a gun in their hand may be stupid, but in this case, based on the facts we have, it's not illegal. What is illegal is trying to imprison someone who hasn't committed a crime, especially when you haven't seen a crime being committed. And based on the facts that we have, they did not see him commit a crime. I can't prove or disprove Aubrey's intentions that day, no more than I can prove or disprove the intentions of the McMichaels. But, like I said in my original video, if you're literally watching me commit a crime, cool. Do what you need to do, within reason, to stop the crime from happening. But, if you only suspect that I've committed a crime based on the way I look, call the cops and tell them where I am. Because if you're wrong and you stop me with a gun in your hands, I'm going to think you're trying to kill me. And I'm going to do everything in my power to stop it. I never said or implied that the McMichaels were racist. Never said they shot him because he was black. I didn't even say they should be charged with murder. Personally, I don't think it's the smartest thing in the world to walk through an unconstructed home in a foreign neighborhood. Even though I, along with millions of other people, oh my God. have done it countless times.
Me too. I also think a citizen blocking the road and standing with a shotgun in your hand to make a citizen's arrest simply because you see a man running on the street that fits a broad description of someone who committed a crime you didn't even see screams, if you don't comply with me, I will shoot you. Why else would he be holding the gun? He didn't have a holster or slung across his shoulder, but literally holding it. Anyone confronted with this type of situation has a right to defend their life accordingly. If Audrey didn't break any laws, he had every right to stand his ground that day. If you disagree with me, I get it. This isn't an open and shut case. That's why we're talking about it. That's why it's going to trial. This is a controversial case with a lot of questions and clearly a lot of facts that haven't been released to the degree that I thought they were when I made my first video. That being said, Calling me a race baiter because you disagree with me on the facts is disingenuous. Call me an homosexual, a car nut, a person with terrible taste in music, but a race baiter? I'm absolutely not. I didn't say Aubrey should be alive today because he was black. I'm saying he should be alive because I believe there was a better way to handle that entire situation. Right now there's a culture war against the Second Amendment, which is why I need your help spreading our message to counter their message. You can help do this by leaving a comment, sharing this video, and clicking the bell and subscribe button. Let my voice be your voice, and let them know you wanna keep America tactical, because the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed wasn't a suggestion, it was a directive. Facts. Now, you see all that? No race involved. I never said that they were racist. What I did say is that before we had all the video came out of Arbery in the house, allegedly in the uh, allegedly it being Arbery, I said it would be convenient if they were that way for them to say that they he broke into a house that wasn't occupied. But what we're talking about right now is a human being killed another human being unjustly okay it doesn't matter what color they are it was unjustly done so instead of saying that we're race baiters okay because there, there, there are people out there that are doing that right there are groups benjamin crump all this other all these other people that are exploiting the situation to highlight themselves as civil rights activists yeah but for those of us who uh, uh, those of us who aren't doing that, if you go and dispute it, dispute the facts that we brought to you, and y'all in y'all feelings, okay? Every time I turn around, every time facts are brought to you, well, he shouldn't have charged him, okay? We're not talking about that. This is the question: Did Arbery, or did he not commit a crime? Did he or did he not commit a felony? Did the McMichaels have immediate knowledge, immediate knowledge of the crime in progress? Those are the questions that need to be answered because guess what? If they hadn't, then they shouldn't have went after him in the first place. And it wouldn't matter if he charged him with a gun. And let's get into some more things. Now, the McMichaels mentioned that he was just, he, they, they thought he broke, it got into that house two times before, okay? And both times, as you saw, and in videos that I saw, he never did anything. He never committed a crime. As Colian said, there was no signs. There was nothing to indicate that, that you could not go into that house. That's Georgia law. Y'all want to y'all go with the law, right? Let's stick with the law. So, remember that... Batman McMichaels used to be an investigator for the DA. And it, that's how he could have learned that there were there was someone in that house before. That's how, that's how he could have learned that. But according to the owners, the the English or whatever whatever their last name is, they never released the videos to them prior to the incident at hand. So we bringing facts to y'all, but I know y'all gonna come. Y'all y'all gonna come in my conversation like y'all do and try to make excuses. No, let's let let's dispute the facts. Let's dispute what we're bringing to you. Okay, I don't want to hear nothing about. Ooh, he shouldn't have charged. He should have ran that way. He should have he should have ran this way. He should have flew in the air like Batman or Superman. Oh, he should have did this. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear that. What I want to hear is 
I want to hear you prove or see you prove that Ahmaud Arbery committed a crime, period. And if so, did he commit a felony? Period. If you can't do that, and if they can't do that, if the McMichaels lawyers can't do that, if facts don't come out later on that show that he did commit a crime, y'all can miss me. And this is what it is. This is what it is. There are a lot smarter people than me dealing with this. Like this guy, he's a lawyer. I'm not going to say he's right because he's a lawyer. I'm going to say that instead of just listening to him and saying, oh, he's a lawyer, he's right. No, what he did was he would say, oh, I'm a lawyer. Uh, you should listen to me. Uh, Ahmaud Arbery didn't kill himself. Or uh, I'm going to kill himself. What? Ahmaud Arbery didn't commit a crime. No, what he did was present facts and evidence and references to back up what he said. He fact-checked what he was talking about. And he presented it to us. So he's not just a lawyer at this point. He's a lawyer who did due diligence and did research and then even stated that as of right now, there might be facts that come out later. So if y'all can't dispute that, y'all can go ahead and do, do what y'all want. Do, do what y'all want in the comment section. I don't care. Like, I don't care about that. You know what I'm saying? Speak your mind. I'm all about speaking your mind. I'm all about freedom of speech. So say what you want in the comment section. All I'm telling you is you have, you, you, you have a right to free speech and you have a right to stupidity. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. Free speech does Having free speech doesn't preclude you from being stupid. So I'll, I'll tell you what. If, if Whatever, man. Y'all know what I'm saying. Uh, it is what it is. If y'all have something to say, y'all tell me what y'all think. Is uh, is calling in on point? Are you are you feeling where he's coming from, or do you still think that Ahmaud Arbery committed a crime in the first place? Because now, at first I thought he committed misdemeanor trespassing, you know, because he 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 went to somebody's house, <laughs> and uh, he went to somebody's house that didn't belong to him, without their knowledge. But then as the facts come out. Y'all want to stick to the law? Let's stick to the law. The law says no crime unless he committed a, unless unless he went in there with the intent to commit a felony or whatever the case may be. So anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think uh, in the comment section below, and um, y'all have a beautiful day. And like, share, subscribe. Check out Callie on the UR. He has a lot of good content. Um, some reason some people don't like him because they feel like he's trying to get paid but so i, I never understood that anyway i'll let y'all later peace out